What's up guys, GG4X here, welcome back to my channel and on today's video I'm going to be showing you my perfect setup. Now this is how I want to trade when I'm not at my job. So I've got a week off in July and this is how I'm hopefully going to be trading. Um, but again, if you guys do do a 9 to 5, you won't be able to trade like this. It's annoying, I know, this is how I want to trade, I really do, but I can't. I've got a beautiful set setup to show you on EN and one trade that I could have taken but for some annoying reason I've been doing markups that I, when you think in a carefree state of mind like um, Mark Douglas says and if you guys haven't been listening to Mark Douglas videos you have to start doing that for your mindset right because it will keep graining into your mind when you keep repeating it, repeating it, repeating it, and then you're gonna start noticing things and then you're gonna start taking action on those things and then it's gonna start paying off. But it will take you multiple lessons to do it. So if you wanna think like a professional trader, just type in Mark Douglas. If you haven't already, it's in the GG Forex group down below and it's, it's the link is in there. Just watch it, it'll help you out massively. Anyway. There's one on NU. Beautiful trade. I did the markup. Did I set the pending? No. Should I have? Yes, because it was a beautiful trade. So what I'm going to do now, no messing about, I'm going to break down those trades for you right now. So for you guys that are working at home, for you guys that are students, whoever has more time in the charts to trade this way, take full advantage of this, guys, because it's pretty magical. So yeah, no messing about. Let's get in the charts. Right, guys, I hope you can see me in the corner, if I can just hold this properly, there we go. Right, so we're on EM, right? And what have I noticed? I'm on the four hour time frame. Um, and for those of you guys who got any questions, just let me know in the comment box below and I'll help you out as much as I can. If not, join the group, message me on there or message me on Instagram, whatever you, is easiest for you. Mostly on my Instagram and in the group is probably where you're gonna get hold of me a lot easier. But this is the area where I'm looking. This is, this is a four hour candle, why? Because this four hour candle created this move, right? And I noticed that this, this kind of mitigated it, but not fully. All it did was fill in balance, right? Right in this area here. So I was thinking price was stepping down into this area. So that was my point of interest. For me, I had my eyes on this. All I needed to do now was just wait for proof to see if price wanted to come back up. Because what I'm thinking is price was wanting to, because obviously if I was gonna set a random pending, my random pending would be that, and I would be testing that candle there. Why? Because this candle had a huge amount of sell orders going in one direction, created a load of imbalance, and was um, the candle that caused this huge move, right? So I think the banks wanna go back and mitigate out of their orders, which caused this move to balance out the markets. Now, I know you're probably saying, George, why didn't you just set a random pending? Because I didn't see it, okay? Because <laughs> I didn't see it, and the raw to rigs wasn't there. And as you know, the four hour time frames from my last video takes too long. I want to go down a lower time frame. So let me just get the replay tool out and just go back to what we can actually see. And I've got to see if I can use my memory of what I was seeing at that time. So let's just fast forward a few bits. The reason why guys, I didn't get into this trade was because of the spreads. So the spreads were, it was happening around about 10 p.m. GMT. So obviously 10 p.m. GMT is a crossover between New York finish and Asian start and obviously on different brokers at differently run out times, the FTMO broker just sort of freezes for about 10 minutes. It doesn't really do nothing. So you'll see moves that happen on TradingView, whether you're using FXCM or, or Oanda, the different data feeds they have will be different for whoever you're choosing, right? And obviously the broker that I've got for um, uh, FTMO is going to be different again, so it's going to be slightly different. So you can use TradingView to mark up your charts, but you always check your actual broker that you're trading on of where your entries and stop losses are. Because I've had it where I've had a beautiful setup on TradingView, put my entries and stop losses in on that, but when I transferred that information over to my FTMO broker, the entry was like in the middle of the candle, and the stop loss was just somewhere in the middle of the candle as well, which just wasn't the same. So you always got to double check and adjust. Um, what you're doing, right? So anyway, 
Let's just rewind this back so you can see. So price was stepping down into this area, as you can see, guys, right? So as you can see, price is stepping down. And as it is stepping down, what is it doing? What do I like to see? I like to see liquidity, liquidity equal highs being made, right? So I'm seeing targets for price to go up at a later date to then take, right? Because people are gonna see this as areas of support, putting their stop losses up there, and I'm seeing that as gonna be taken. But what also am I seeing is lows being taken. So they're taking buyers out of the market as well, right? So people who are buying this are getting stopped out. So that's been taken, but at the same time, if you have a look, if I can do it, you can see the RSI is going up. So price, is stepping down, RSI is going up, okay? So let's just keep playing this out. Now what I'm looking for now is price to start breaking above these highs, maybe making more targets. Break of structure, also showing change of character for me more likely, okay? Ooh. Let's just zoom in a bit so we can actually see what the hell's going on. Right, so let's just keep playing this out. Boom, broken again. Right, so now we have had another break to the downside. So we have three main pushes, right? We've had one push, broken, one push, broken, another push, broken, right? So we have three pushes, three pushes to the downside. And then from this push, we've had this break. So now we are starting to take the equal highs, which is showing now that the buyers are more in control than the sellers. We've now had a break of structure, change of character to this thing, to this pair, not thing, to this pair, right? And what can I see on this? This five minute candle down here. Okay, this is the candle that took out the liquidity down here and started to make new highs. So instead of going high, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, now we got a lower low, now we've got a higher high, okay? We've changed structure, we've changed character, internal structure. Because remember, this is still bearish or maybe bullish on the higher time frames, all right? But I won't do a full top-down analysis, but as you can see, we are this purple bar, we are trading within that candle, okay, on the lower time frames. So as I like to say, if you're willing to buy there on the higher time frame, then it will be okay for you to buy there on the lower time frames. That's how I want you to think about it. I know when I said that on the last couple of videos I've done, it helped a lot of people out with where they should be buying or where they should be selling. If you're willing to buy or sell in that position on the higher time frames, then you're doing the right thing, okay? So let's just keep flicking through this. I'm gonna put my pendant on before I, uh, <laughs> before I mess this up. Uh, not the fibs. It will be this. Let's just do the fibs anyway, just so I can show you where how beautiful this lined up. Right, so this blue area, this is my kill zone. As you can see, my candle in there is lined up beautifully. Let's just get my trade planner on. It would be from top of that wick. It's bottom of that. So we have got a f just. If I go, yeah, we've got 14 pips stop. And my targets, as I said, where do I want to be targeting? These highs that were created up here. Okay, so we have got just under a one to six. Okay, so as you look at the RC, price stepping down. Taking out the premature buyers, okay? Because people would see this as M's. So they'll be seeing that as a, as a sell position, so we're putting our stops up there. People will be seeing this as W's, and they'll be seeing that as a buy position, so we're putting our stops down there. However you bloody see it, okay, you're gonna be losing, because the bank's gonna be taking you out. But if I just show you where the money's been taken, it's gone there, it's gone there, and now it's gone there, and now it's gone there. So where's the money left? Up here, okay, we still got money there. We've got money there, and we got money there, okay? So, on this time frame, I am buying at a four hour point of interest on a five minute time frame, okay? I didn't get this, I had a pending on this, and remember this is within the New York, uh, London, New York cross, 
okay? London York Cross, this is um, and also a confirmation for me because this has happened at high manipulation times and it's happened between uh, quarter to, it's about 20 to four in the afternoon. So between half past one and like four o'clock is roughly my favorite time to trade because this is when this type of stuff happens. Normally, not all the time, sometimes it happens before, sometimes it happens after. But let's just play this out. So it's coming to the end. Look at that. Wit. It comes down again, I believe, if I remember correctly. Right, so I didn't get this. I think I had a slightly fatter stop loss, maybe. I think it's roughly there. Um, but with spreads and trading times these wicks down into this order block never happened okay remember when asian session closed this wick come down and obviously triggered in trade on trading view but on ftmo nothing happened it was literally just <clears throat> it just it just froze for about 10 minutes or so and then after 10 minutes then it came back on with the massive spreads okay but by then the trade was off the table it's already happened i missed out on it but if it didn't happen during that time, it probably did because obviously it's an NZD pair. They move more during the Asian session because remember, New Zealand, that's on the other side of the world. Uh, Australian dollar, that's on the other side of the world. Um, Japanese yen, like obviously that side of the world's waking up. So that's when those pairs move more often. Euro's going to sleep. So if I just play this out, came in beautifully and there is a possible re-entry on this. As you can see, look up. Look how much this has moved. The black area is the Asian session. So during London and New York, right? During London and New York, let's measure how much pips were moved. So during London and New York, 60 pips, right? 60 pips is the max this pair has moved. Now we'll wait to the end of the Asian session. Oh, well, while already triggered during the Asian session, absolutely smashed it. Again, going to my point of interest line. Um, but now, right? So from Asian session, I'm even going to do it from here. And it's going to end there. So during the Asian session, get rid of oh, what a place to put it. During the Asian session, that pair moved 107 pips. As I say, this pair moves more during Asian sessions. So these setups can happen right before Asian sessions start and you just are gonna miss out. It's just the name of the game. It's just, it's just how it is, all right? But it's a beautiful, beautiful trade, pitch perfect setup. This is exactly how I would love to trade, um, but I just can um, this on this pair, uh, but not, I just can't trade like this whilst I'm at a 9 to 5. It's just not going to happen because um, I would have to watch for this manipulation to happen. And then when it makes the move, I'll just have to be looking at the right time to catch this trade. And the likelihood of me catching this trade at the right time is quite slim. Again, obviously, I saw this happen and put the pending on, obviously, because this was like after work when I finished at 5 o'clock. Um, so I didn't get this this wick into this area, but it is what it is. I hope you guys liked that setup. So if I go over the basics, this purple area is that four hour candle. So I was willing to buy there at a high time frame anyway. I dropped down to lower time frames to get the better reward to risk. Okay, it was making targets on the way down. It was taking out buyers on the way down. Strength was going up all the way. I was waiting for the break of structure to the top side and I was just entering on the candle that caused that move. Got my fibs out, all lined up properly and just played, uh, traded my plan and planned my trade. And these are the setups that I love the most. They're beautiful. Remember I only moved 82 pips and I got a nice one to five. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to be extra ballsy, you could have just taken it to the actual candle that way and you could have got a one to six and a half. But yeah, so that is a beautiful trade setup. And there was one on NU, but I'll probably do that on a different video. Well, let me guys know if you want to watch that breakdown on NU, but it's pretty similar, but in a cell, and I know it can help 
uh, you guys out when you learn about buys and sells and all that sorts of stuff and how to see it, even though it's exactly the same, but upside down, <clears throat> it can be quite tricky to uh, pitch that in your head. But when someone breaks it down like this, it can um, help you guys out a lot more. So again, this is how I want to trade. <laughs> okay. This is how I want to trade, but I can because I'm in my nine to five. When I'm out, then I'm definitely going to be trading like this. All right. But until then, I can't. But for those of you who are working from home or a student, or, or, or pardon me, <laughs> or a student, or can just trade like this when you're at work, take full advantage of this, guys. And I hope it helps you out massively. But if you haven't joined the GG Forex group, the link's down below. I'll see you there if you have any questions. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.